Welcome back. In this video, you'll learn about the portfolio method. Let's get to it. All right, so sometimes there are investment funds that pool money from several different individuals or corporations, and then the fund is responsible for making investments for those individuals or corporations. And so in a situation like this, for that fund, a natural question would be how should the investment fund distribute the returns or the interest between the different individuals or corporations? And one way to distribute that interest to the various accounts is known as the portfolio method. And what the portfolio method does is it applies one specific rate of interest to all accounts regardless of when the money enters the fund. And typically that interest rate will be an effective annual rate, meaning that it's compounded interest and that rate will change from year to year. Now, even though it's changing from year to year, whatever that rate is, it is applied to all investments in that fund. All right, and so we call those rates portfolio rates and denote them with I superscript Y, where Y is the year that the interest rate is credited, the year that that particular rate is active. And so if you take a look at this timeline here, if we were looking at a period of time where we have various different years, this first year here would be represented with Y, and then we have the next year Y plus one, and then the next year Y plus two, all the way up until Y plus T minus one, and then Y plus T. This is just a set of years from Y to Y plus T. Each of these years in the portfolio method would be assigned a certain portfolio rate of I with a superscript of that year. So really this rate right here, I for the year Y, would be the interest rate that accumulates interest from this first year to the second year Y plus one. So from year Y to Y plus one, the interest would be accumulated using a particular interest rate I that is assigned to year Y, all right? And so then that interest rate could change for the following year. So to accumulate interest from year Y plus one to year Y plus two, we would have another interest rate or portfolio rate that would correspond to the year Y plus one. And then we could continue that on for the next year. To accumulate interest from year Y plus two to year Y plus three, we would have another portfolio rate that would be represented with I, and then we'd have a superscript of Y plus two. All right, and so that would continue on until our final period, where we would have one more portfolio rate that would accumulate interest from year Y plus T minus one to year Y plus T, and that would be a portfolio rate that corresponds to that year of Y plus T minus one. All right, so if an individual or a corporation deposited an amount X or invested an amount X at year Y into an investment fund that uses the portfolio method with these portfolio rates, then in order to calculate the future value or the accumulation of that investment in this investment fund from year Y to year Y plus T, how could we find that accumulated value? Well, remember for compound interest, our accumulation factor looks like this. We have one plus that interest rate to the power of N, or sometimes you'll see to the power of T. Either way, N or T just would represent the number of periods that you're compounding for. In this case, every single portfolio rate is only active for one year, one period. So all of our accumulation factors for these different portfolio rates are going to have a power of one. N is just going to be one. So using this accumulation factor and knowing that the power is going to be one, we can accumulate the interest on this investment from year Y to year Y plus T. That will look like this. The accumulation at time Y plus T will be equal to the amount of that investment X times the accumulation factor for that first portfolio rate for a one year period. So we'll have one plus I to the power of Y and that is raised to the power of one. So there's no exponent here. We just have this quantity of one plus the portfolio rate for year Y. Then to accumulate it another period from Y plus one to Y plus two, we'll multiply by another accumulation factor, except this time we'll have one plus the portfolio rate for the year Y plus one. And so that would accumulate the interest for this investment up to year Y plus two and we would continue to multiply by these accumulation factors for the different portfolio rates until we get to our last period that we're interested in, which would be from year Y plus T minus one to year Y plus T. And that would use this final portfolio rate for that year Y plus T minus one. 
All right, so we would multiply by one plus the portfolio rate for the year Y plus T minus one. All right, and so this calculation right here, this is how you would calculate the accumulation for an investment of X in an investment fund that uses the portfolio method. Unless the portfolio rates don't change, each rate is only going to last for one year. So you just multiply your investment by the accumulation factor for compound interest for one year with each of the portfolio rates up until the year before you wanna know the accumulation, all right? Notice here that if we wanna know the accumulation at time Y plus T, this final year right here, we don't have an accumulation factor that uses the portfolio rate for that year. The last accumulation factor uses the portfolio rate for the previous year because we are accumulating the interest for this investment from that previous year to the last year and then we are stopping there. We're not accumulating any more interest after that final year. So there is no accumulation factor using the portfolio rate for that year. Okay, so that's the basic idea of the portfolio method. But to get a better understanding of how this really works, let's look at some examples where we will actually calculate the accumulation of an investment in a fund that uses the portfolio method. All right, so here's our first example. Suppose that an investment fund credits investors using the portfolio method with the annual rates in the table below. That would be this table right here. If $100 is invested on January 1st of 2017, find the balance on January 1st of 2018, 2019, and 2020. All right, so we're gonna be calculating three different values in this problem. We're calculating the accumulated amount of this $100 made in 2017 at the end of 2018, 2019, and 2020. And of course, this investment is made in a fund that is using the portfolio method. All right, and so the first thing that you need to pay attention to here is the year that that investment is made. This $100 investment was made on January 1st of 2017, the beginning of that year. Now, thankfully, in our table here of portfolio rates, the first rate that we're given is for 2017. That's the rate we're going to use to calculate the accumulation of that $100 from 2017 to 2018, right? Since the investment was made at the beginning of 2017, all of the interest that will be accumulated for that year up until the beginning of 2018 will be generated using this 3.5% portfolio rate that corresponds to this year of 2017. All right, so make sure that you know when that investment was made. We know that this $100 investment was made in 2017, which corresponds to this rate right here. Okay, so the accumulated value in 2018 will be equal to that investment of $100 times one plus the portfolio rate for 2017, right? We are accumulating this $100 to the beginning of 2018, so we're not gonna use the rate for 2018, we're using the rate for 2017. So we'll have one plus 3.5%. In decimal form, that will be 0.035. And that's only going to be to the power of one. All right, and this is the only accumulation factor we need because we're only accumulating for one year. Our investment was made in 2017. We wanna know the value in 2018. Okay, and so one plus 0.035 will just be 1.035. So this is equal to 100 times 1.0. 3.5, and that will be equal to $103.50. So that is the accumulated amount or the balance of this $100 investment in 2018. All right, it earned $3.50 worth of interest. All right, so that takes care of 2018, but now let's move on to 2019. And so in order to calculate the balance or the accumulated value of that $100 investment in 2019, we could do this two different ways. We could take our accumulated value from 2018 and just multiply it by the accumulation factor using the portfolio rate from 2018, right? Because this $103.50 is the value of the investment at the beginning of 2018. So if we wanna accumulate the interest for the next year up until 2019, we need to use the interest rate for 2018. All right, so we could do that or we could string together our accumulation factors and use the original investment of $100, multiply it by 1.035, and then multiply it by one plus the portfolio rate for 2018. All right, and that's going to be this rate right here of 4%. So 
So I have one plus 0 0.04, which will just be 1.04. So I'm just going to rewrite that right away. We'll have 1.04. And this right here will calculate the accumulated value or the balance of that $100 investment at the beginning of 2019. All right, we have that $100. We're multiplying it by the accumulation factor for 2017. And then we're multiplying it by another accumulation factor for 2018. That takes us to the beginning of 2019. So if we multiply these values together, this would be the same as 103.5 times 1.04. That will be equal to 107.64. So $107.64 is the balance of that $100 investment at the beginning of 2019. All right, so that takes care of 2019. Now we have one more year where we wanna know the balance or the accumulated value, and that would be for 2020. And all we have to do to calculate that is multiply by another accumulation factor using the portfolio rate for 2019. All right, we want to accumulate this value in 2019 one more year using the portfolio rate for that year. That will bring us to the beginning of 2020. So for 2020, we'll have that $100 times the accumulation factor for 2017 times another accumulation factor, but this time for 2018, and then we're going to multiply it by another accumulation factor for 2019. And so we're going to use this portfolio rate right here of 3.25%. So I'll have one plus 3.25% in decimal form, which is 0 0.0325. All right, and so if we add one to this decimal, we'll just have 1.0325. So I'm going to just rewrite that here. We'll have 1.0325. And multiplying these three accumulation factors together and multiplying them by 100 will give us the balance at the beginning of 2020. And so if you multiply everything together, note that it would be the same as multiplying 107.64 by this accumulation factor right here, 1.0325. But however you do it, this will be equal to $111.14. That is the balance on January 1st or the beginning of 2020. And so now we have completed this example problem. All right, so that's the general idea of using the portfolio method. The most important thing that you need to remember is to make sure you know when the original investment was made because depending on the year when that investment was made, you will need to use a different portfolio rate to accumulate the interest and find the balance at the beginning of different years. All right, and so now before I end this lesson, I wanna show you one more example where we have a slight variation in how the portfolio rates are given because sometimes these tables will look a little bit different and can seem a little confusing at first, but they're really not too bad. And so let's take a look at that next. Okay, so here's our second example. We have on January 1st, 2006, an amount of $1,000 is invested into a fund that uses the portfolio method. If the table of annual rates below is used, what is the balance on January 1st of 2009? All right, now just like with our previous example, the first thing that you need to take a note of here is when that original investment is made. This $1,000 is invested into the fund using the portfolio method on January 1st of 2006. All right, so I'm gonna circle that. 2006 is the year that this investment was made. It's important to make a note of that. All right, but if we look at our table of portfolio rates here, notice that we don't actually have a rate for 2006, right? In our year column, we have 2002, 2003, 2004, but no 2005, 2006, and all of the other years up until 2009 where we wanna know the balance. And so what do we do here? Well, if we take a look at the portfolio rates column, notice that we don't just have I with a superscript of Y, we have I with a superscript of Y plus four. So what this is telling us is that these portfolio rates don't actually correspond to each of these three years in the table. They actually correspond to the year four years after each of those years, all right? And so you can kind of intuitively see that 2002 is going to correspond to 2006 because if Y is 2002, then 2002 plus four is 2006. But if you couldn't see that right away, here's how you could determine which of these rates is going to apply to each of the years between 2006 
and 2009 where we need to accumulate interest for this investment of $1,000 using the portfolio method. First thing we need to do is identify what years we are interested in. If we're accumulating an amount of $1,000 from 2006 to 2009, we need to know the portfolio rates for 2006, 2007, and 2008, right? We wanna know the balance at the beginning of 2009, so we don't need a portfolio rate for 2009. We just need a portfolio rate for these three years right here, okay? So here's what we can do to figure out which of these portfolio rates correspond to each of these years. We can set these years that aren't in this table equal to y plus four, all right? So we'll set 2006 equal to y plus four, we'll set 2007 equal to y plus four, and we'll set 2008 equal to y plus four. Now, if we solve for y by subtracting four from both sides of each of these equations, essentially we're just gonna be subtracting four from each of these years, we can find the years that they correspond to. So for 2006, 2006 minus four is 2002. For 2007, 2007 minus four is 2003. And for 2008, 2008 minus four is 2004. All right, so for 2006, we will use the portfolio rate for 2002. That's what we learned from setting up this equation based on this table of annual rates. For 2007, we're going to use the portfolio rate for 2003. And for 2008, we will use the portfolio rate for 2004. So this rate right here. Okay, so for 2006, we're going to use a portfolio rate of 8.7%. For 2007, we will use a rate of 9.31%. And for 2008, we will use a rate of 9.30%. And so if we wanna find the balance at the beginning of 2009, or the value of the investment at the beginning of 2009, what we can do is take that $1,000 investment and multiply it by the accumulation factor for each of these years using their respective portfolio rates. All right, so we'll have one plus the portfolio rate for 2002, which corresponds to 2006, which is 8.7%. So in decimal form, we would have 0.087. But once again, I'm just gonna add this right away. One plus 0.087 is just 1.087. So I'll write that here. We'll have 1.087. Remember that each of these accumulation factors are only being raised to a power of one, all right? And so that's our accumulation factor for 2006. Then for 2007, we need to use the portfolio rate for 2003. So we will have an accumulation factor using this portfolio rate of 9.31%. So we'll have one plus that percentage, which will give us 1.0931, right? 0.931 is 9.31%. And then finally, we will multiply by the accumulation factor for 2008, which will use the portfolio rate that corresponds to 2004, which is 9.3%. So we'll have 1.093. Okay, so this right here, 1000 times 1.087 times 1.0931 times 1.093 will give us the balance of this investment at the beginning of 2009. So if you plug that into a calculator, you will find that in 2009, that the balance of the investment is $1,298.70. All right, that is the answer to this example problem. Okay, and so with that, that is the end of this example and also the end of this lesson. That's pretty much everything you need to know about the portfolio method. If you do wanna see some more examples of using the portfolio method, feel free to check out my examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.